Hi guys, so I've been painting a lot of the Hero Quest miniatures recently, but something I wanted to be going doing, and that's making the diorama of, well, this front page. So my plan is to make the diorama, yeah, in a box, um, but trying to get the perspective, well, exactly the same as it is here. So obviously the guy at the front being nice and big, and then everyone else getting smaller and smaller. But I don't want the box to be too big either. So that's why, yeah, the miniatures are going to be bigger and, well, smaller. So starting with the Barbarian as well, why not? Let's start at the front just because he's nice and beefy. So I've gone over to my mini factory and I've downloaded this, the Barbarian. And as you can see there, it's a free sample, which is awesome. I'll leave a link down below, guys, to where you can get this from. And you can download it either supported or non-supported. And, well, generally I get the supported ones because I want to make this, well, the size I want to make it. I'm going to download the unsupported size just because, say, I want to change the size of this. Um, yeah, because I kind of want to make the diorama the same size as the, the quest book. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of using as my reference for sizing. Uh, as you can see there, yeah, it blew him up by a good 100%, so twice the size. And now I can add the supports. Obviously, if I had downloaded the, uh, the version with the supports and then blew him up, uh, yeah, the supports then would have been like twice the thickness, which obviously I didn't want. Because um, obviously the smaller the supports, the less impact they have on the actual model. So when you take the supports off, yeah, you can't see, well, you can't see where they've been. Um, and say so these days, Chichibox really is working rather well with supports. I know when I used to use this a good few years ago, um, yeah, any failures I would have got from Prince generally was me doing my own supports. But uh, yeah, Chichibox uh, had quite a few updates and yeah, the supports are awesome. So I'm sticking with my Sonic Mighty 8K by Frozen as well. This printer has been amazing. Uh, yeah, it's a trooper. It's going quite a lot because well, I do print off a lot of miniatures. And yeah, using the Frozen 8K resin as well, just because you really do get some lovely looking prints coming out. So yeah, these printers, awesome to use, easy to use and great results. Yeah, it's simply a case of popping in the USB, pushing a couple of buttons, um, and yeah, away it goes. So obviously all the information is on the screen. So the screens on these are great because it tells you how long it's going to take. Uh, and obviously any other kind of like details you may want to need. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm still using the settings or the basic settings that came with the machine. So I probably could make this print a lot quicker. Um, but say, because I'm not getting any failures or anything, um, and time isn't, well, time isn't really a factor. It doesn't matter if it takes seven or eight hours. Um, because I know I'm going to get the perfect print coming out. So down it goes. Obviously I did put the cover on for the, the main print. Um, yeah, and then seven hours and a bit later, it's all done uh, and ready to take off. So as you can see, yeah, I did cut my uh, my lid in half. This just makes it nice and easy to get to uh, without having to lift the lid right off the top because, well, in my case, I can't. I've got a shelf above it. Uh, but yeah, I can still get in, get access to everything I need. And there we go, yeah, one lovely print come out. Uh, obviously don't want to touch it yet because there is a lot of, uh, well, loose resin all over it. So that needs to go into my uh, my little wash station. Clears off all the resin. Uh, and now, yeah, I can take off the supports. So as always, I like to put it in some warm water just because this does make the uh, supports, well, they just peel off like butter. And while I'm doing that, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my lovely patrons as well. Yeah, it's your guys' support. That means I can do this full time and, well, just generally be a big kid and, well, have lots of fun. So many thanks to all you lovely chaps and chapesses. And there we go. Yeah, prints looking awesome. I say, using these smaller, fine supports, there's no indentations of any kind in this, this dude. Um, and yeah, say, they just came off a treat. So, yeah, awesome stuff uh, by Frozen. Love it. So yeah, put him in the uh, the curing station, just sort of cure it, I think, and now I can touch him by hand. Uh, and say, love how he's come out. Um, obviously, looking at the, the picture on the cover, he's not exactly the same. He's not far off, but not exactly. So I'm going to make a few changes to this chap because, well, I want this diorama to look as near as to how it looks on the, uh, the quest book. So to do that, I need to do a little bit of chopping, a little bit of sanding. And I've got my cheap little sort of Dremel tool here. And I'm going to use that just to sand down some areas. So I did start off doing this on my desk. Um, but as you can see, yeah, it gets a bit smoky and a bit dusty. So I had a little change of plan and I took it outside. 
Uh, so obviously it doesn't make a mess of my desk and I'm not breathing in all those toxic um, dust particles. So yeah, trimmed him down so he's not looking too bad. Uh, but the other thing is his arm position I'm not fussed on and the fact he has got open toed, well, sandals. So I need to move his arms or the position of his arms because I want to get the sword laying at the same sort of angle. And I need to chop his toes off as well. So yeah, we'll chop the fronts off. I say this is going to be changed into, well, like sandals. So we'll be using some green stuff in a minute, which is always fun. Um, it's something I want to use more of, but I never really sort of, well, get projects that use it a lot. Um, so yeah, practice will make perfect with that one. So I did chop his hands and arms off uh, at my desk. I am wearing a mask for this. Um, as I say, there is quite a bit of dust and I've got a vacuum cleaner near me, which is kind of like trying to suck most of it away. Uh, but yeah, it does make a little bit of a mess because you don't want to breathe this stuff in. So this is always a fun bit though, chopping bits off um, because it's always that fear of chopping too much off or, well, basically just ruining the whole thing. Obviously with 3D prints, it's not too bad because, well, you can just go and print another one off. But obviously generally I do try and think a lot about where I'm going to cut um, just so I don't minimise or do too much damage to him. So say it literally is, I just wanted to change the angle just by that little bit. Um, so yeah, it was worth doing. So to make it easier to work on him, yeah, I've got my little miniature holder here. Again, this thing was 3D printed, but uh, just awesome to use. And sticking him on wires, this makes it easier for me to paint, well, all around him. So clearly before I do any painting though, I do need to fill in some gaps, uh, yeah, where I cut him up. So because there's quite a big gap, I'm going to use the uh, the green stuff. But I thought I'd put a little bit of resin in there first. This will help obviously keep the bits together. And it means I'll then use less of the green stuff. So, well, I'm not too sure if the green stuff works out cheaper or not than the resin. Uh, yeah, never looked into that to be honest. So the green stuff, uh, yeah, it comes a lot better than it used to. Because in the past, the, uh, the blue and the yellow stuff used to touch. Which meant that bit that was touching uh, kind of cured. So sometimes you'd get hard lumpy bits. But as you can clearly see, yeah, the two bits are separate, which is just awesome. So yeah, hopefully no more hard lumps. Uh, so this stuff, yeah, it does take a little while to sort of mix the two in. So speed it up a little bit there. Uh, obviously when it gets nice and warm, it does mix in a lot better. And there we go, it's gone green, which is why, well, we call it green stuff. Well, I think that's why we call it green stuff. If we don't, let me know why. Um, so yeah, so using that, I can just fill in these little gaps. Uh, the main thing with the green stuff, get it wet. So I keep licking my finger, although I should really dip my finger in some water rather than putting it on the green stuff and then putting it in my mouth. Uh, but hey-ho, we'll, uh, we'll ignore that bit. Um, so yeah, get the stuff wet. That makes it easier to move, to smooth, and that way you don't get obviously the big thumbprints um, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, relatively easy to use. It's just a case of I do need to find more projects to do more with green stuff because it is, well, it's fun stuff. And yeah, you really can change the look of whatever it is you're, you're working on. So I'm loving the new position of the sword. Now I've just got to add a few more bits. Um, yeah, got these little tufts of fur here and there coming out the bottom. As well as his, well, skirt. Um, yeah, that needs to be sort of changed a little bit as well. A bit more added to make it a little bit bigger. Um, but again, yeah, green stuff for all of this. Um, so I really am using this in its basic form. Uh, I have seen some awesome model makers out there fully make little miniatures with this stuff. Um, obviously having the right tools helps, but definitely uh, practice makes perfect on this. So now I'm just trying to add a few sort of like crease marks into uh, his, I'm going to call it again, skirt, because um, I'm not sure what uh, better word there is. Um, so yeah, again, I do need to get more tools though. As you can see, yeah, I've got this uh, cheap little plastic tool. Um, I've got a few other tools. But again, they are small, cheap little plastic tools as well. Um, and then, yeah, using um, some bits of wire, I'm using these just to join obviously the two cloths together, because these are painted differently. So, yeah, bits of wire there to make it look like, uh, well, bits of thread, I guess. And then his toes. Um, so, yeah, this miniature, obviously he had normal shoes on, but in the book, uh, the guy's wearing sandals. So, yeah, let's have a go at making some toes. Again, I am kind of lacking in tools, so I'm using, well, I'm using a very blunt scalpel. Uh, but it seems to be doing the trick. So yeah, maybe I might get some more tools. Um, 
because they might, I don't know, if I get more tools, I probably still won't do much with the green stuff, uh, but I'll just have a load of tools sitting around, which is generally kind of the thing, because I've got a lot of stuff that I use, I've, I have had sitting around for years, where I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, I'll use it one day, uh, and then don't. So I did have a go at trying to make his belt, because it's got like a lion's face on it. Uh, but yeah, that didn't come out too well, so I cheated and 3D printed it. And, and there we go, he's looking much more like the, uh, the book cover there. So let's crack on and get him painted. And as we all know, yeah, I'm going to slap chop him, just because that is my go-to method. I love it. It's fun. And again, what I always say with this hobby, it is meant to be fun. So if you're painting and you're not enjoying it, try a different way of painting. Uh, and for me, slap chop is great because it's quick, it's simple, it does what it's meant to do, um, and yeah, I love it. So I love doing it, love the end result, just easy. And there we go, so that's the, well, that's the hard bit done. Uh, primed in black, dry brushed in white, and now it's just a case of, well, chucking the paint on. And as you can probably tell from the, uh, well, the last couple of months of videos, I am absolutely smitten now with Green Stuff World paints. Um, and I love their dipping inks. Uh, so they do go on, they are very translucent. They're a lot more fluid than the uh, contrast paints by Citadel or the speed paints. Um, and initially this put me off because they were so much more translucent. But I love it because it gives you much more control on how the paint's gonna look. Um, so as you can see, I'm doing one coat here at the moment. I did end up doing two just because it was a bit too sort of light. Uh, but yeah, the fact that you can do one coat, two coats, three coats is just great. This stuff doesn't reactivate either when you sort of leave it and then paint over it. So yeah, give it as many coats as you think's needed, really. Uh, and yeah, so this painting style, it, yeah, love it. Um, you, some of you gonna, might, might be getting bored of me saying it all the time, but honestly, this has got me into painting so much more. Obviously, I've been doing this now for, I don't know, about a year and a half painting like this. Um, I'd have to have a look, see when I first ever painted video came out, but uh, yeah, this, well, I've, as you can probably tell, I paint miniatures every day, uh, which is just awesome. And that's the other thing I do like about the Green Stuff World dipping inks, they, uh, their white and their black are, well, white and black. I found with most of the other sort of uh, speed paints and contrast paints, the white and the black, well, the white normally goes a bit greyish, and the black normally has a bit of a green tint to it. Uh, but not with the dipping inks. Uh, yeah, these are, well, I would say definitely the best white and black you can use. Obviously there are no metallic paints, so yeah, I've used normal sort of paints uh, for the silver and the gold. Uh, obviously these will get a wash at the end. Uh, but yeah, so the black, again, I think this is because they are so much more fluid uh, and translucent, they just work really well because they really do pull so much in all those nooks and crannies. Um, and yeah, you really just get a nice sort of contrast between the dark and the light. So good old wash over the end here. And yeah, this chap, he is, well, almost done. And the one last thing I wanted to do was just to make his skin tones look a bit, uh, well, a bit nicer, because say some of it looks a bit dark. So all the raised areas, I've got a good old skin tone here. Again, Green Stuff World paints. Uh, I've mixed it with quite a lot of water, so it is very weak. Um, and yeah, just going over the raised areas, just to make his skin look a little bit sort of cleaner and neater, but obviously still leaving those much darker areas, again, in all the old nooks and crannies. And yeah, absolutely love how this guy's turned out, so I will be doing the rest of the diorama and obviously all the other miniatures that are on the Hero Quest quest book, uh, just because I love the look of that scene. And I say, to make a little sort of box diorama will, uh, well, will look really good. Okay, so let's see this dude in, well, all his glory. There we go, yeah, so I had to go at painting his eyes as well, um, yeah, uh, it wasn't disastrous, but obviously not the best, but hey ho, uh, but yeah, I love the fact that obviously I've had to go at making uh, some changes to the original 3D printed look, and yeah, he looks so much more like the artwork, which is obviously exactly what I was going for, and yeah, I can't wait to, well, make the rest of the things and the box for it all to live in. 
So guys, yeah, if you've seen any of the other sort of miniatures on the uh, the cover here, and you've seen where I could possibly download them, by all means let me know, as yeah, I want to try and make this diorama, well, as near as possible to, well, how it looks. Okay guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave comments down below, let me know what you thought of this video, and what you want to see me do next, and yeah, another video on the screen guys, give that a click, see more what I do. Okay guys, you all take care, see you in the next one. Bye for now.